Hi, I'm Brian Hubbard. I'm with the Get Well Show, which happens at London's Olympia in February. We're going to have a fantastic array of speakers and exhibitors. And I'm delighted to say that I have one of them here today, Rob the Fugger. He doesn't know this, but he's about one of my favourite guys. I think he's genuinely <laughs> one of the heroes of the last decade. Oh, Rob. that's very kind of you to say that. Rob is uh, championing freedom of treatment, of therapy, of uh, in a scientific way. He's taking on the administrators scientifically and trying to establish and keep our health freedoms. And so he's a remarkable man. And it would be your pleasure to come along to the show to hear this guy, because he's going to be, he's so knowledgeable. He has so much expertise. He's got so much science behind him. You guys are going to be bowled over by what he's going to talk about. Rob's going to talk twice at the show. He's going to talk about the gut-brain connection, which is probably the single most important factor in health today. And you're going to talk about low carbs. I mean, I two have. absolute key issues. Rob, tell us more. Key issues, but also controversial issues. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to deal with the gut-brain connection, really to give people steps how to hone this connection. Um, we, we're born with it. We, we don't treat it with great respect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you, if you look at the... Everyone knows about fight and flight response. Yeah but they don't know about rest and digest. Um, so we get this disturbance of the autonomic nervous system, the right. part of the nervous system that right. we can't control. Right. And you know, a lot of people are eating on the hoof. Mm. They're asking mm. their gut to do things that it's not intended to do. Right. That's why in a lot of um, traditional societies, you see people sitting around tables, right. relaxing while they're eating, right. so that the right. parasympathetic system can be in action so they can digest food. Right. Now, not only are we doing that, we are often have gut permeability issues. Yeah, yeah. And there are, you know, if we don't look after this connection, our food is really the most intimate yeah, way in which we experience the external so, environment. So what in impact does this have on the brain health? Essentially, we can't extract the nutrients out of our food. We cannot generate the neurotransmitters that we need to create the neurotransmitter balance that we need. Right. Um, it's also difficult to do that in certain diets, you know. Yeah. Um, a lot of vegans mm. who may have disturbances in terms of their methionine cycle, the key amino acid that okay. is essential to be able to <clears throat> produce the, mm -hmm. say, the, the tryptophan and the dopamine and serotonin that we need. Um, this is the science, guys. This yeah. is the science. So, so you know, you yeah. need to yeah. get all the nutrients out of your right. diet. Right. And as you get older, your ability to assimilate nutrients right. also declines. Right. So you need to make up for that. So right. it's right. really how we can um, understand yeah. what particular markers yeah. we need to get sorted yeah. in order to really make the most of right. this incredibly And then we see, obviously, cognitive mental decline as we age, mm. memory loss, you know, sharpness always and you think this could well be a most of it is preventable right. most of it is right. preventable right. but if you don't know right. what you need to do right. and this idea that you can just uh, consume what yeah. the government tells us to eat right. um, uh, you know yeah. low fat diets yeah. are one of the problems that we have here right. so we need to get healthy right. brain fats right. into right. our diet right. we need to sort out gut permeability we need to right. establish vagal tone the, the key autonomic nerve right. cranial nerve right. That actually is a direct connection between our brain and our gut. Um, so it's the stuff that we need to do, and the stuff that we need to learn to. to We've make been told for thirty years, low-fat diet's the way to go. Completely wrong as you get older, in particular. Let's turn quickly to your second yeah. talk, low carbs. So of course, um, a lot of people have seen huge positive responses in terms of weight loss and yeah. dealing with obesity, yeah. um, getting rid of brain fog by yeah. going low carb you will now know that the, the system has has jumped in there with some rather mm. dodgy science very often yeah. to suggest that oh, low carb mm. can be dangerous. Mm. The reality is that there is no absolute firm definition of, around what low carb is. No. But the bottom line is that the over-reliance on processed carbohydrates, yeah. refined carbohydrates, is causing a massive problem in society. Now, as soon as you reduce the amount of those carbs, you have to replace it with something. We mm. call it substitution. Mm. And of course, we shouldn't be replacing it with just with protein. 
mm. um, because there can be problems in terms of putting our kidneys under too much pressure, mm. putting too much protein in. Mm. But we have to replace it with fats. Now, mm. what kind of fats do you replace it with? Mm. Um, so, really, what what we want to introduce here is this idea of low carb as an evolutionary eating plan to mm. understand the kind of carbs that we need to be consuming mm. as well as how we prepare those mm. in the kitchen or mm. when we're out and about mm. what ones we select mm. generally speaking you won't find them in the garage forecourts yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. because that's where many yeah. of the problems lie yeah. Yeah. but also what kind of fats we, we, we consume yeah. and many of the problems relate really to industrial farming and food processing mm. foods I mean mm. these are where the problems are mm. So we can go back to an evolutionary eating plan, get all the benefits of low carb in terms of reducing our risk massively to type 2 diabetes, uh, reducing our risk to type 3 diabetes, otherwise known as Alzheimer's disease. They're very, very closely related, linked to inflammation, linked to these kind of diets, and also you know, restricting the number of times in the day that we're feeding ourselves. Uh, food frequency is a major issue. And if people are some way down this path already, can they take steps back by improving their diet? Yeah, it, look, it, it, it's um, it, if you've gone into um, you know full mm. blown type two diabetes where you're starting mm. to see mm. um, major issues, it can be difficult. But mm. um, certainly, caught at an early stage, particularly at a sort of pre-diabetes mm. stage, mm. it is absolutely reversible. Mm. There are more and more studies now mm. um, showing how this mm. can be done. But mm. a combination of intermittent fasting, mm. caloric restriction, low carb replacement with healthy fats mm. and that's really part of the solution. Okay, so if you have early stage diabetes, yep. worried about Alzheimer's, cognitive issues, yep. general brain fog, yep. any other issues? In, um, you, low energy. Low, low energy. energy. I mean low energy is not a natural state. As no, soon as our mitochondrial so, um, you know, function starts declining, we need to do something about right. it and that's also linked directly right. with gut function, how you right. improve both together. Right. And, and, and digestion itself, of course, and Absolutely. the gut itself as, as a digestive yep. problem. So any of you are concerned about any of these things, you've got to be at the Get Well show in February. It makes sense. February the 21st through to the 23rd. Rob's going to be speaking twice during the show. You've got to be there, guys, obviously.